from your umbrellas for a minute and hopefully it will hold off for a little bit longer. Um, it, this makes me filled with regret that they don't teach you how to rap in law school because now I have to face the prospect of not being so funny but being a bit more serious. Um, I did want to start by congratulating you all for coming out. This is a foul day, true to form in Melbourne winter, uh, but you're resisting it like you're standing up to lots of things and I'm very proud of you. So a big hello, a big thank you for coming and a big hello to all our ASIO friends in the audience as well. You're very welcome and if you want to come see me afterwards, I'm happy to have a chat with you. In fact, raise your hand now if you're from ASIO. We'd all like to have a chat with you, I think. Oh, we've got a couple down the back. These are very dangerous times, in my view, when it comes to speaking truth to power. There can be no doubt, I think, in anyone's mind, and certainly hopefully no one's mind here today, that the US is planning to get its hands on Assange. Now, we might not know exactly when or exactly where and what it will look like, but anyone who dismisses this as paranoid is foolish at best or willfully blind at worst. And if Assange ends up in the US, there are good grounds to think that he'll be treated in a manner that would do some tyrants of history proud. And as a lawyer, I've been tracking this and it's extremely alarming. Let's look at the US's track record. They've got Guantanamo Bay still open. It's approaching its 11th anniversary in January next year. At my last check, there were um, uh, nearly about 171 or so prisoners. Um, there was only three people to leave in the last 12 months and two of them were in body bags. Uh, 135 of them uh, are actually slated for release but can't be released by the US for no good reason. They can't be charged, but they'll be sitting there forever. Uh, and this is a terrible shame. And this is not just going on in Guantanamo, it's going on in secret prisons all around the world where the US holds people without charge, trashes their human rights and subjects them to torture. Now, there might be some legal fancy footwork that gets you out of calling waterboarding torture, but I don't know anyone who's experienced waterboarding and describes it as anything other than torture. So their track record is poor and if we look at how they treated Bradley Manning, who is allegedly the person that's released this information, uh, he was held in circumstances that also amount to torture for long periods in, in solitary confinement. And if you're a whistleblower, Barack Obama is the worst US president in history for you. He's treated them worse than any of his other predecessors. This is a cause of great shame and a huge amount of alarm for anyone who looks and, and cherishes a free press. So clearly Assange is up against an enemy that has form in trashing the rule of law and trampling over human rights. But it's not just Assange, it's all of us. Because if we don't speak out about this and defend Assange, these abuses of human rights are normalised and they become a normal part of American foreign policy, a normal part of American domestic policy, and they have translating effects back here at home, where our government thinks it can also trash human rights. When the US treats human beings like this, it sets a benchmark for power everywhere, that it can crush its enemies with abandon. And as a lawyer, I am very concerned by this, and as a lawyer, I therefore fully support Assange's bid for asylum in fleeing to the Ecuadorian embassy. It's a huge shame to me that he feels that he cannot be protected by his own government, and it's not good enough. Shame. It's so important at this juncture to focus on what WikiLeaks has achieved. A free press, in my mind, is vital to democracy. We need a press that exposes injustice, that champions the causes of the disenfranchised, that keeps mining magnates in their place, that reveals the paucity of political debate in this country and strives to generate a public debate that contributes to a fairer and more just society. Now, WikiLeaks has played a very important role in achieving some of those aims. It tells us what politicians actually think. It demonstrates how big business works. And by giving, and, and most importantly in my mind, it gives people a sense that this power can be challenged. It upsets things. It disrupts traditional circles of privilege. And it reveals that 
that the power that capital can have when it seeks to control our free press. And I'm thinking here about Gina Reinhart. People were screaming out that before, but I think that's a very fair criticism. If we consider that a free press is one that can be owned by someone like Gina Reinhart, we've got to re move the goalposts in my mind. We need more organisations that speak truth to power. We need more individuals to risk their lives to show that the Emperor has no clothes. Because without them, the rule of law and human rights stand little chance of survival in the tide towards barbarism. Keep fighting, keep standing strong. History will prove us right. Solidarity. Thank you very much. We believe in freedom and rest. We believe